Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Cassio and I am a fashion photographer. In my previous video, I talked about how to create images based on different shades of the same color. But today, I'm gonna talk about BOOM! Opposite colors! And the opposite of black is white, right? Yeah, man, opposite colors, yeah? Also known as complementary colors. Have you seen the color wheel before? Have you? Have a look at this. The primary colors are red, yellow, and blue, right? Also known as RYB, or CMY if you like, as standing for cyan, magenta, and yellow. Mix these colors and you will get the secondary colors, yeah? Also known as complementary colors, or opposite colors, or contrast colors, there's so many different names for it, right? The three traditional sets of complementary colors, as derived from YIB color model, are red and green, yellow and purple, and orange and blue. You can see them positioned opposite one another on the color wheel. Play with different shades of primary colors, and you get different complementary colors, green and magenta, red and cyan, and blue and yellow. Complementary colors, when used together in color schemes, are dynamic and quite pleasant to the eye, aren't they? No wonder designers make full use of complementary colors when creating logos, right? Have you ever wondered why safety barriers are black and yellow, and why stop signs are red and white, and the exit signs are green and white, or direction signs are blue and white. Have you ever wondered about that? It's all related to semiotics, man. Have you heard about semiotics before? Semiotics is the study of signs and symbols and they use an interpretation. It's like how your brain reacts to a specific color. It's also called the psychology of colors. So red indicates danger. Signs in red prevent a certain action or highlight danger, right? Yellow indicates information, so signs in yellow are meant to draw attention. Signs containing the blue color are typically used to display obligatory instructions or information. And the green color is used in signs made to direct people and highlight important features of a certain setting, right? But how about using the complementary colors and the psychology of colors in fashion photography? In my early days in digital photography, a friend of mine was running a free paper and asked me to shoot some sexy girls for his magazine. I saw it as a chance to exercise some ideas I had in mind, but had no clue how to do it because I knew nothing about Photoshop. The designer of the magazine knew how to use Photoshop. Great, so I take the pictures, I give the data to him, and I try to direct him like to retouch the pictures according to the ideas I had. My ideas were based on the work of David LaChapelle. He's undoubtedly the craziest photographer in the fashion business. Huh? You see that David LaChapelle used plenty of complementary colors on his photos, yeah? Have a look at these photos here. Are they cool, nice colors, yeah? Check out this skin tone and the skin texture and see how smooth it looks. They're pretty eye-catch, aren't they? It's not only for the colors and skin tones and patterns and this and this and this, but you see that the models have a different kind of attitude in there, right? It's totally unexpected what they're doing out there. It's like, what is this? It's, it, somehow it calls for a reaction, doesn't it? It's just like the yellow and black of the uh, safety barrier there. It's, they react to his pictures, right? So I decided to shoot the models doing something totally different, right? Something like unorthodox, 
So like, for, just for example, like eating pasta in the stairs, making phone call when falling down the stairs, doing her nails in the, in the middle of somewhere there, and uh, eating grapes on, against this wall there, and drinking coffee, and drinking Coca-Cola, and taking pictures. Uh, let's try to make something different. That's what I had in mind. So I did a bit of a location scouting around my place and I found a few different walls and stairs and spots there with colors in it, right? Then I asked the models to bring clothes according to the complementary colors of the location spots I found. Blue and yellow, magenta and green, and even the Coca-Cola bottle was inspiring. So I used red and black. And why not pink and black? Pink is a shade of red, isn't it? So I asked the designer if he could retouch the pictures according to David LaChapelle's style. Like, strong colors, that skin, and the attitude of the model was up to me then. I had to direct them how to look unorthodox, right? To get that skin there, the designer used the clone tool on Photoshop, opacity around 4%, and painted the model's skin over and over and over and over and over again until he gets it totally smooth. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's very close to what David LaChapelle did, isn't it? I thought he did a pretty good job, and he said like he was using a mouse, not a Wacom tablet, not a pen, a mouse, man, so he couldn't hardly lift a fork to his mouth after he finished retouching six or seven photos, a lot of legs, a lot of skin, you know, like he was like, oh my god, that might be a very hard job for him to do. As I said, these pictures are just an experiment with the complementary colors and uh, I was trying to understand how the contrast and stuff work on Photoshop, how the skin works on Photoshop, and blah, blah, blah. So eventually, I got asked to shoot an advertising for a fashion brand. And I went to see the clothes, and the clothes were black and white. When I saw that, uh, the semiotics thing came out to my mind. Yeah, the stop sign, the Coca-Cola logo. Mm, what if we shoot black, white against red? And then what if we shoot the models in a kind of, of uh, unexpected behavior, doing something different, you know what I mean? And the client was like, yeah, let's do that. So he arranged a few props together, and that's what I came out with. Check this out. Pow! <laughs> I used the same lighting I used for the sexy girls experiment for my friend's free paper. A ring light. Very simple and easy to use. A ring light looks like this. And the camera with the lens there in the middle, and boom, boom, boom. It's very good to shoot like shiny stuff, yeah? It comes out really good. As for the skin, I used the Photoshop plugin called Portrait Chart uh, from a software brand called Imagenomic and uh, much easier than using the clone tool with low opacity painting over and over again like my friend did. No, Imagenomic, much easier, man. Now, have a look at this picture. It's a scene from a Wes Anderson movie called Moonrise Kingdom. As I said on my previous video, Wes Anderson makes full use of different tones of the same color. In this case, different shades of green. But what happens when you add a complementary color of green to the scene? Boom! Man, this girl wearing pink is just eye-catchy, isn't she? And the pink blends so well with the shades of green, doesn't it? Another inspiring image, isn't it? One day, out of the blue, this fashion designer I know called me asking me if I could shoot two of her new line of sexy dresses, yeah? I said, cool, let's do it. So I went to see the dress and it was a really shining, scintillating kind of blue. It's like, super sexy dress. Then I had this kind of material that depends how you position it. It looks green or blue. I thought it could be interesting to use as a backdrop for the shiny blue dress the girl was going to be wearing. Now try to follow my line of thought. The opposite of blue, or the complementary color of blue, 
is yellow, right? But according to the psychology of colors, yellow is associated with joy and happiness. And the dress was sexy. Joy and happiness doesn't really go along with sexy kind of image, does it? But on the other hand, as I said, depending how you position the backdrop, it's gonna look green. And the opposite of green is red, right? So the color red is associated with danger, power, passion, and love. So it's pink, right? Because pink is supposed to be a shade of red. And pink is a complementary color of green. And our backdrop there had got different shades of green, right? So when the designer called me to take the pictures, so I thought it was a good opportunity to exercise once again the use of complementary colors. This is what I came out with. Check this out. Bow. I even told the makeup artist to match the color of the lips with the color of the bikini she was wearing. Pretty cool. And the second dress the designer asked me to take pictures of was this pink frilled kind of dress. Once again, I saw it as an opportunity to exercise lighting and Photoshop and complementary colors. So I used the same garage shutter I shot with a sexy girl there with a ring light, but this time I used natural light and I want to see the difference between high contrast stuff done with ring light and high contrast stuff done with natural light but both with the same complementary colors green and pink later on I had the opportunity to shoot a page from magazine and then once again I used pink against green but this time the Photoshop was a bit more pastel tone not so much contrast right complementary colors is quite interesting isn't it Next time, when you go for a photo shoot, if you don't have an idea of how to create a story, why don't you just go around looking for some location for some colorful walls out there? Then you ask your model to bring complementary colors of the spot you have found. Boom, match them both, and then, you know, like you can try flash and natural light and see what's the difference, and you might come out with something interesting. Because sometimes it costs a lot of money to go and create a story and get the bright props and stuff. Just play with the colors because it's cheap, and you, I'm sure there is a colorful all around your place, isn't there? Go around, I'm sure you're gonna find something, and the girls or, or guys that you know uh, might have clothes there are complementary colors of the spot you have found. If they don't have it, maybe they can borrow from somebody, right? Why don't you try it out? And don't forget, try with shooting with flash and natural light and see the difference, okay? Now let me give you a few tips of how to direct your model. So let's go back to semiotics and the psychology of colors. Let's say that your model is wearing blue. Put her against a white backdrop and tell her to look confident and intelligent because blue is associated with trust. If your model is wearing yellow, tell her to look energetic and happy because yellow is related to joy. Shoot your model wearing yellow against a black backdrop and her joy will call everyone's attention, right? Just Google psychology of color and see which color is associated to what kind of feeling. Then direct your model to model according to that kind of feeling, right? Now call a model, tell her to bring a sexy red dress, set her against a white backdrop, tell her to strike a few hot poses, you know what I mean? And nothing can go wrong because according to the psychology of colors, red is associated with love, passion, danger, and And red is associated with Rilo Red Corvette, which is a Prince song, isn't it? Pink is 
a shade of red, isn't it? Prince has got another song called Pink Kashmir, hasn't he? Yeah, and purple is another shade of pink. And Prince has got a song called Purple Rain. I bet he studied the color wheel before making his songs, don't you think so? <laughs> Rest in peace, Prince loves his music, man. Right, guys, under the new rules, YouTube is not gonna promote my videos unless I have 1,000 subscribers. And there is only 170 to go, man. Would you please pow, click that subscription button there, drop me a comment and let me know what you think about this complimentary colors kind of idea. It's kind of simple, we can do that too, yeah? Looking forward to hear from you Mike, in the comments below and uh, yeah, see you next week then, yeah? GoPro, switch off!